Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome to an actual like reactor craft tutorial video. Um, so this video is going to be more of a tutorial than the nuclear engineering videos. But what I wanted to talk about is stacking fission reactors. Now I've known you know that these can be stacked vertically for a very long time, but I never actually really did it, and I I don't know why. Um, it's just not something that I ever actually experimented with, but now that I have experimented with it, it's really great and you should totally do it. Uh, so right here I've got, this is like my little experimental area, I have this uh, reactor here, it's two layers thick. All it is is a single steam boiler ringed with eight fuel cores and there's two layers of it and it's currently running these three turbines. Um, with a, uh, a steam, I think that the steam does have a surplus, um, or it's such a slight deficit. Like okay, it is a deficit, but it's so slight. Look at that. It can't really. Um, oh, it is going up. So so it's pretty much even. Um, it looks like this would run indefinitely, producing enough uh, enough steam. I don't think any of the uh, fuel pellets have run out. We're currently 40% on this one. 30% uh, on that one. I've been playing, I've been in this world for quite a bit here. Um, so I don't think it's too much of a fuel hog, I wouldn't say. I don't know. Uh, obviously we can scale this up. And the great thing about this stacked reactor is that you can just continuously stack it. And we're going to take a look at it and I'm going to show you how to build this. So, like I mentioned, the very the, mo the simplest aspect of this stacked reactor is the arrangement that I have here. It's each layer is just going to be one steam boiler ringed by eight fuel cores. And then we surround those with one layer of neutron reflector. And then I'm using bedrock ingot blocks just because it's a perfect shielding material. But obviously you could use a couple layers of concrete. You could submerge this in a pool of water, which I think, I think works pretty decently for absorbing the neutrons. You can do whatever shielding you want as long uh, to get there. I just did this because it makes it as small as possible. All right. So what this will do is it doesn't really get that hot for one. It gets up to around 350, sometimes it's 400, so you might get a little bit of of a, of a steam, but I haven't seen this steam yet. And it just runs continuously. Obviously, I, I have a system here to pull out the uh, to pull out the waste and the depleted uh, cells. I don't have a system on top of this to put the fuel pellets in. But as you would expect, uh, fuel pellets go in the top and they trickle all the way down to the very bottom layer. So all of them get fueled. And the opposite, of course, happens for the steam boilers. You put water in the bottom one and it does put water up into the top one. Now an interesting aspect of this is if we look at the bottom one, we can see that it's hovering around the 11,000 mark, but it usually has about 12,000. This one is hovering around 10 to 11. Every, and it seems like every layer you add, the topmost steam boiler gets a little bit less water, but we'll take a look at that in a second. And we're gonna build this as, as basically as big as we can get it. Now over here I have a different reactor design that was given to me by somebody on a different Discord, and I'm still toying around with seeing the exact uh, layout that I want, so we're gonna leave, we're not gonna, I'm not really gonna touch on this, uh, except to show you, it's just another stacked reactor, but this one basically combines a uh, more traditional grid reactor with uh, with stacking. And that um, this concrete in here doesn't interfere with these uh, fuel cores at all, it's just there to fill the gaps. Um, of course we want to thermally insulate stuff, so that's why we put these blocks right up against here. But we're running three turbines off of this right now, but what we're going to do is we're going to cut the uh, steam line there and we're going to cut the steam line to here and we're going to break these steam lines because they have way too much steam in them even this one um, but I can't break that or this turbine will explode um, okay it's running out very quickly though so that's great so we're going to let this uh, this high pressure turbine run out of steam it's not going to take that long and what we're going to do is we're going to plug this reactor into the high pressure turbine and we're going to see exactly how many layers of reactor we need in order to run as close to zero as we can basically as as close to no gain no loss as possible 
And I don't actually think it's going to take that many layers. So, first things first, adding additional layers to these is really easy as long as you build your steam lines in a, a tall stack before you move them over, right? So you leave yourself plenty of room to add another steam boiler. So just break a steam line, add another steam boiler, and then we just ring it with fuel cores. Now, if you watched the previous episode of our nuclear engineering with Shiva, you'll notice, you'll notice that this setup did not work if we only had four fuel cores, just cardinal direction around the boiler. Adding these additional ones allow, gets us up to temperature and allows this whole thing to run extremely well. So if you have been avoiding reactor craft or fission reactors because they're, you think they're too complicated, they're really not. So this is how much waste we've produced in about, I'd say, 20 minutes of dicking around. And I still don't think a single one of these is depleted. There are 54% on that one, uh, 42 on that one. So I think those are the highest level. Yeah, 48. So 52% depleted. It's been about 20 minutes. The cores are all able to share heat with each other, I believe. I think the heat, the heat goes vertically. And we can see that if we place a fuel core on top of here, we can see that it's heating up. So the heat is, is also transmitted vertically. So the entire stack um, keeps its heat relatively the same. So the heat transfers through every single layer. So not one layer isn't going to get hotter than another layer. 58% on that. See what we got. If we got anything. We're up to 81 so if we look at our steam boiler, we're currently at what I would consider to be the max. See, this boiler almost runs out of water. Actually, is it running out of water? I don't think it's hitting zero, but it's getting extremely close. It might be hitting, eh. It might be hitting zero. I think it might hit. Is it going to hit empty at any point? I don't think it's going to hit empty. Oh, it did. It, it briefly flashed empty. So that's an issue. Um, so this is essentially the functional limit. I'm going, to, I'm going to call this the functional limit. So... It doesn't appear as though it's going to run anymore. We can't force enough water up the stack to get to this steam boiler and keep it full. So we don't want to add any more layers. This is going to be it. So now that we've hit the functional limit, where are we at? We're at two, four, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And honestly, I would probably call the safe limit at six. This, while it probably won't explode, the fact that this boiler periodically hits zero is a little bit concerning. You can see that the the bottom boiler stays around uh, 150 something, periodically hits 200. The top boiler, however, is is usually at 200 um, or right around it. And the same thing's going on throughout the stack. So seven is going to be the absolute limit, unless there's a way to force more water into the stack. Um, and it is running the high pressure turbine. So we are at max power on this turbine. And our steam level appears to be stable. Like, I can't really tell if it's gaining anything or not. Um, yeah, it's impossible for me to tell. No, it is gaining slightly. So there you go. It really doesn't have to be more difficult than this. Now, I'm not really sure what the efficiency on this thing is, as far as its fuel usage over time. Um, it still hasn't run out on its, uh, uh, the first uranium fuel pellet is at 75%. It's been running for about 30 minutes at this point, probably more. It's produced quite a bit of waste, but then they all do, don't they? And this is what we have. And as you can see, the temperature, while it does hit 400 and something, is very stable. 
300 and, 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 and periodically at 4. This one down here, this bottom layer is down at 250. But the boilers all, always stay above 100 because they're completely surrounded by heat. They're, they're not going to drop below 100. They're going to produce steam constantly. So with seven layers of this, we end up with powering this high pressure turbine. All right. So we have eight fuel cores per layer and we have seven layers. I'm not actually sure what that is. Eight times five would be um, 40. And we're adding another 16, 56. 56 fuel cores running a high, a high pressure turbine. Probably not the most efficient design. I don't know. Let's take a look at this reactor. How many do I have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I've got 12 cores per stack and i got 4 layers. And uh, so 12 times 4 is 48. So yeah, as we can, we can see that this reactor can run this high pressure turbine. It's got I believe, anyway, if my math isn't correct, isn't off, 56 fuel cores. This one over here is able to run the high pressure turbine and produce a steam surplus, which could probably run a couple more standard turbines with 48 cores. So this one uses less cores to provide more power. It also has a lot more boilers. Now these ones don't stay above 100 24 seven like the other ones do. But the end result, there's 63 depleted. This thing's been running for a very long time, okay? A very long time. It's producing quite a lot of waste, and a lot of and a lot of uranium has been depleted. But this reactor has been running a lot longer than the other one because I was testing this a lot earlier. But basically, what I wanted to to show in this video is how effective stacking uh, your fission reactors uh, can be. Uh, it can make your reactor a very powerful reactor while also being completely safe and it can run you know you can even you can run a high pressure turbine quite quite easily you don't need a complicated layout although a better layout of cores will produce um, you know a more power so a more a more efficient design but yeah uh, so if you've never tried stacking reactors on top of each other um, I highly recommend it it's very easy to do and it's very useful. The only thing I haven't tried to do is use the control rods and stuff with a stacked reactor. I'm pretty sure you can, but I haven't tried. And honestly, I haven't seen the need to because none of the designs that I've messed with yet, albeit only these two, are in any danger of exploding. I've never really experimented with reactors that would need to be duty cycled to not explode. Maybe if somebody can get me a design for one of those, I can take a look at it. So yeah, stacking fission reactor reactors. Um, it's really good. Do it. Anyway, I'm Sentinel H. I hope you liked this video. If you did like it, uh, drop a like and comment. Uh, join our Discord if you'd like to talk with us. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.